Ciao. Here's your son, son, son. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Principe Sazilke. And I have to answer questions. First question. How do you remember what Paul was wearing the day he came? And I know which one you mean. You mean the day May 1st. Because it had been the second time he came to my house. That day. Uh, I remember the shirt. I do not remember the pants. Because when he arrived, well, I had been expecting him. I noticed when he was walking up, I had left the door. I opened the door for him. I must have nodded or something, acknowledged him with a jest. And I moved, like guiding him, to the back. I. I I looked down to the floor, like, yeah, I don't know, maybe shy? But it's like something which is intuitive. Now that I'm asked, I would not have noticed that. Just to reproduce the moment. Because what happens is that in a conversation, you have to give your, your the partner, your interlocutor, the person you talk with, the overhand you have to give him the command the lead and that's particularly well easy for me as a woman because I am putting myself on his command maybe I also lowered my gaze so he could look without facing because I had the strong sensation that he needed that that he could actually slowly take the overhand. See, not as a, I could not have him as a schoolboy receiving instructions. He had to come to, to converse with me in a way from his initiative. All this I can explain now. I have had, it's just something happens within me naturally because I'm not a school teacher. I don't have a job to fulfill. I don't have a book to read to anybody. That would be, I can depict it for you. That would be the opposite scenario. Standing in front of students and needing to teach something which I'm ordered to because I'm paid for it. But this is a, a, a conversation between two people. And he is the man. So I have to allow him to be without, yeah, I hear the words without excessive this and that, but this isn't, doesn't apply to me. I don't know what it is. Excessive, huh? I don't do anything. That's the best way of enhancing someone else by me not doing anything, allowing him to do, to choose, to decide, actually to handle the conversation, even though it is a conversation because he's not there to teach me either. So intuitively, and maybe because he needed it, I looked down so he could look at me uh, out of his own initiative or assess the situation or look at the room or look out over my head. I don't know. Take take place in the spot. Opposite to if I would have looked at him stare straight in the eyes, then he needed to respond to me. Particularly if I I had thought he was like intuitive like like we are. When you're intuitive like we are, we are respectful with other people. We allow them to assess. We do never impose ourselves. It's like a communication skill. That's no words needed. So as I said, if I would have looked him in the eyes, then he needed to, from our perspective, needed to respond to what I needed from him. And this is not exactly what happened. It was the opposite way around. Can you, can you follow? When someone looks at you with the blue eyes, stare into the eyes, you would say, what the heck? Yeah, what do you want? What's going on? What do you need? Tell me all about it. Or don't tell me. Oh my God. It can be frightening too when you're like not used to talk to a woman. So maybe I did it Asian way or Indian way. You know, from India. Yeah, namaste, fold my hands. 
or put them in f- together in front. But I did not do that, yes. But the attitude is just the same. Namaste is the attitude of having an inner desire of wishing the other person well and acknowledging a higher spirit within him. That means allowing him to explore and express. And often expressing is just by wishing to have a check. Look what's going on. I felt he was very nervous about it, very nervous. And very uncomfortable and very unease. It's quite the opposite of who I am, because I don't mind to go anywhere, because I'm just me. I just observe and I'm calm. And he felt uncomfortable to me in a way, so I made it easy for him. The moment I heard his steps coming up the... Um, I had to walk before the door, I opened the door so he did not have to knock or ring. I acknowledged him, I looked down so he could look, oh, okay, here's the house. It was very neat, everything. I mean, it is always neat, but I did it particularly neat. Everything was absolutely perfect. <clears throat> yeah, clean and neat. Too far coming. So he would feel uncomfortable, not uncomfortable, but comfortable. Home, in a way. Warm. That's how I am. It has nothing to do. That they lived in a shithole, well, that's their choice. It's not mine. It's not who I am. I always like my stuff clean. Always. Okay, I do not do manipulative shit like Lee said these things. They put in perfume and the light bulb. No, no, it could be that I tried it out by myself just to see how the effect is. Putting perfume in a light bulb and then turn it on, see if it diffu- like a diffuser. But she, she told me she would do these things for her boyfriend when they would come home late. I don't do anything like that. I don't do things to achieve anything. That's that's not who I am. Everything I do is to make the person un- comfortable, to make him comfortable. So I opened the door. I, I turned down my gaze, but I didn't wait it. I just walked, acknowledging him. It would be in a way in- engaging him. Now we are here. This is the way. Like lead him to the way where I had prepared a space for him. Straight forward. Yeah, it's like maybe in the doctor's office. Yeah, please go ahead. This is your waiting room. This way, ma'am. Here it is. So, but I did not say one word. I just guided him through in the living room. Yeah, we had to go through the living room. He knew the place. He had been there. He went there. He went once. And it definitely looked very different. Because I had changed a lot of things from then on. Well, I know it because of the time and because of... I remember the table where he sat. So after that, I changed a lot of things. I... I also remember the year now, okay. Well, I changed the table, and I changed the furniture, and I changed the wards, the car- I changed the carpet, I changed the painting, I changed... It wasn't stuffed anymore, it was light. The little salon was, was easy. Yeah, I also had... Um, everything was super clean. So that it is, I, I walked through the living room. Not, uh, you know, did you... Oh my God, how... You don't walk through the living room, just like, how is it even called I mean, in America? They don't have hallways. It's like, boom, you open the door, there it is. So the living room was to the left. You had to kind of, it's not even a hallway, but you had to walk in front of the other wall to the next one, which is like the dining room area. Where the, yeah, this guy, like another room with the terrace doors open. I had the terrace doors open, wide open, to the garden. Of course, that was different too than when he came the second time. And then I stepped aside where the printer is and pointed the table to him. That little bamboo table I showed you guys two, three days ago. I don't know which day, but it was the first video of that day. I do remember that now. Yes, and for being like a high table and a stool, it's, it's pretty comfortable for a while. It's, it doesn't invite to stay there long, though. <laughs> it's like you sit there, take your meal, and yeah, maybe you can sit a little longer, but then you go. 
So I stood by the stood by the printer and pointed the table to him, and he chose his his chair. He chose where he wanted to sit, which of course wasn't my chair because it's the best place because it's a good feng shui position intuitively because you get the mountain in the back the wall in the back and you have the overview over the entire area opposite to for example put your back against you know the flow of the traffic no i had the best seat always because i'm i don't know because it matters to me because usually people don't want to see what's going on around them they just look at their little plate or their book it doesn't matter to them and I feel like I have to have the overview so from that place I could or he could see the entire kitchen he could see the window to the garden he could see the salon yeah, is it a parlor? <laughs> I wouldn't, it's so old fashioned I would never name it yeah he could see all the way to the chimney which didn't have a chimney anymore which had this beautiful silver painting and the little you know burner he could also see a little shelf in the living room the very in the entrance I could not send you a picture it's really cute really cute black from Scandinavian design and so he said and then he looked at me like oh, so what's up maybe he said it I don't think so so I had a stack of papers on the table so I I I handed it to him. I handed them to him. And I did never sat down. I stood there between the printer and the table. Patiently. To allow him to have a check on the papers. So he began reading. Almost out loud. Not all. Like, mm hmm, 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 hmm. And then he started objecting. <laughs> He said, yeah, well, maybe the first thing was this birthday thing, but he said, this is not my birthday. And so I handed him, I turned to the printer, I handed him a little paper, a sticky note pad and a pen I had. My chair made me prepare it for him. I had it prepared for him. It was laying there for that meeting and for that meeting alone. And that's all. So I handed it to him. I did never said a word in the entire meeting. So he wrote down his birthday, as you have seen the note. Or whatever that is he wrote down there. He wrote down... Okay. So he put it aside on the table and he continued... He took this stack of paper, he continued reading. And then he asked me a question, like, what is that? It just could be that the word Fibonacci popped up. Because I had another... A stack of paper means like two or three sheets maybe. And then I had another three, four, five sheets. But this other stack that was just printed... Um, I had printed out the map with the Indian Ocean. And also a few sheets with plenty, plenty of pictures from Google Earth. No, I'm sorry, from Google... Oh, so sorry, where am I going? <laughs> when you when you check Fibonacci or Fibonacci sequence, what what was there was the vegetables, you know the 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 sequence, but in in the precision of the, what does it mean? I don't think architecture was there, but like the flowers and how does it depict in in the flowers and in the vegetables. I just printed randomly, I googled it and I printed the first page and maybe some of the next and that's all. So I showed it to him. But the thing is I handed him things and he took them out of my hand. Meaning he could have just not do it, but he did. Or there was a moment he asked me for something, so it's like he asked me to approach. And I did. Ah, which is interesting, because in the very beginning there were a, a pair of bamboo reading glasses on the table, which I had actually purchased for him. I don't know, everything new for Paul. So when he started to look at the stack of papers, I also offered him the glasses. I took them in my hand and offered it to him, and he responded, Oh, I didn't count those words, but good that you ask. I don't need reading glasses. 
that he was like upset about it. Of course, but oh, it, it tells you that. <laughs> I mean, I would have said no, thank you, right? Actually, since I have a good sense of humor, I would have looked up, would have looked at these beautiful glasses, and would have said, "Well, these are kind of fashionable. Can I have them without reading glasses?" Wait, I did not. Wow, guys, that's what I have to say. I, how could you know what it was? You guys, how could you know? Do you get it? I didn't. How could you know that? Oh my goodness, I never ever thought about it. That's me surprised. How could you know there were really glasses? They look just like any other glasses or like the sunglasses which get dark when you when you put the light on it, like my Oakley. No, but other glasses or anything. How could you know? I think it came with a case and said, I see you. <laughs> Three letters, I see you. Was not the name of his company too? I don't remember. Yeah, but he was upset. That's an emotional response. It means he didn't need them, or maybe on the edge. Well, I heard he lied about his age on that little paper. It also looks like it when you look at the last number. It looks like wrote with shame and pain and a little bit of fear. You see what I mean? Not affirmative. That was the beginning. So he said, he said that like harsh a little bit. So I took him away with all respect and moved away. And then he kind of called me in. He asked, what is this? He kind of pointed to the paper and looked at me like a question. So I didn't know what it was. So I approached him. And I never sat down. I approached him. And then now I was standing next to him for a moment or in front of him. Very close, and I looked at his eyes. Oh, yeah, right, the pupils went all white, right? He was just glued to my eyes, and his pupils went... He has, like, light blue eyes, right? <clears throat> went really, really wide in, like, no time. I also had another thought, uh, since you all must know, right? You must know, you guys. I thought that he was, like, really scared. But my chair had told me that. It mattered so much, so much to him that it was really hard to get there. And I have the same experience with my opera singing when I was a teenager, I remember. It mattered so much to me <clears throat> that it was really hard to get back on that. that. It took me like a year because it mattered so much to me. So I could understand that he needed some kind of affirmation. <clears throat> so all I ever wanted, him to feel comfortable. And all I ever did was dealing with his fear. Because I could feel it too. So now he caught me in, now I can come closer. And a little bit like, with my attitude, uh, 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 all humble, and yeah, almost shy, but you know, firm. With my attitude, I don't bite. <laughs> no, really, I don't bite. You're good. <clears throat> in other words, this is only going as far as you want it to. Anything here happens because you want it. There's nothing that's going to happen here which you do not want. So I kept my distance. He called me in, I looked the eyes, I showed him that paper, <clears throat> and then I stepped back again. Maybe not that far away, that I don't remember, or maybe yes. Yeah, I was like in the corner of the table, on the, on the side. Between the table and the printer. Yeah, but as I stood there, and maybe I did not move away right away, well, it must have been a moment when he looked at the papers that I looked at his shirt. <clears throat> and I had described it in yesterday because he was sitting right there on that high chair. So I could see his shirt. I noticed his face. Yeah, all sweaty and greasy, like... But I could not see. I mean, I don't. I didn't look at the pants. Also not when he came in, so I do not know what, what that was. I can only guess, but why would I guess? There's no point of doing that. I have no idea. So, the one, do you want me to talk about the shirt? It had horizontal and vertical lines parallel to each other in, in a very many different colors. Yeah, if I say... See, I don't... Is it pleated or plate? No, plate is when it's folded and pleated has like squares. But it was not an exact square. 
like when you paint one. It was more like the result of the lines. Of course, it was square shirt. But it didn't look like it wasn't a hilly belly shirt. You know, hilly belly from the, when you go out there, they're all the same. They're either red or green with black squares. Not like that. It had so very many colors on it. The stitching. It was like a colorful shirt. Yeah, it looked like it was inappropriate and inadequate and stupid and asshole. But I also noticed that Sophia asked me just a few weeks later if she could have exactly one like that. Like that. It's so many colors, it's square. And I wondered, why do you want that? It made no sense to me. Because it's ugly as shit. And because it's so squared. I don't know, I think she got it too, because she wanted it. I don't think she ever wore it though. Which colors? Red and mainly red. And I say, I would say green or blue. I mean, it was maybe a tiny bit of yellow. I mean, all these colors in, in one little... I, w- I wouldn't even know how to describe it otherwise. I'm not really in good talking of, of what is sewn fabric, but yeah, I mean, they were all the same with all these different colors. Like every stripe had got, contained all these colors in them. So overall, it was a colorful shirt over a lighter surface, maybe. I don't know which color that was, the lighter surface. See, it's not black, maybe white, maybe I'm some kind of, I don't know. Well, as described, guys, I don't need to say it again. I already did. It's not, it's, uh, this is not for slandering anybody, I'm just describing what I see. That's all. No, he did not took any care to come to me. So what? Uh, yeah, like a little boy. No care. No, the appointment was made in the morning. And that was in the evening. I do not know why you ask me this, because I don't, I'm don't. i not focused on these things. I would have at least kind of washed my face, put a little bit of water into my face. Some. And then he finished reading it all and look at it. And then he left everything on the table. Yeah, because he could have, it was for him. He could have just taken it too. Everything, all the papers I had, I had shown him, he left them on the table. The little note he wrote, he left it on the table. He could have just taken it too. It was up to him. He was a guy on the table. He was dominating the table all by himself. And then he said, I, I, I have to go. Or he said, maybe, I'm sorry, I have to go. So immediately I stepped aside. So when he would go up, I would not be in his way. So he could exit. And I had also left the door unlocked, the front door. So wait, I stepped aside. He came in, then I locked the door. Okay. Yeah, well, so there's no were. Okay, I took care not to lock the door. I had to think about it for a moment. I was, because I would always lock the door on my front door. But he was in and, and I checked in. I do these things, I do it constantly. I checked in with him and I felt, just don't lock it. I don't know, so he would not feel trapped or so. So he knew he could run out anytime he wanted to. But he must have asked me in a way. Well, I had the feeling I was dealing with a frightened chicken and I had to make sure that he felt safe and he could do whatever he want. Just like my cat, he's not frightened, but you treat cats the same way. You need to invite them, make them feel comfortable and warm from afar and allow them to approach you or not. And have always the liberty to walk away. That's how I treat cats. No, I want to replay it right now because I forgot about that door thing. Open the, if that matters something. Open the door. Let him in, step aside. The only thing I always remember, I kind of step aside. I step aside so he has the freedom of movement. That's very important. Very, very, very respectful too.
I mean, this is something I would do with every person on earth. But I took special care with him because I felt he was like edgy. No, 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 there is nothing. What misunderstanding? There's no misunderstanding because there's no intent. My intent was to give him the papers. Uh, give him a, I don't know, a key to a new door for a different life. But the intent is general, and then is the intent of the moment after moment. Because one thing is that you dream along, and the other thing that things happen, stuff happens, and that's like that was reality. That was something which was happening. So, what happens in the moment? Us, we all are the same. We do not confirm anything, we just observe. We always observe. Unless we stand in a classroom, but this wasn't a classroom like I explained. So we observe and allow. If you have something to give, we have to observe that there is a space to start giving it. When I need to talk to a person, I first embrace the person, often from afar, in my, I don't know, attention, sensitivity. Then I look. If the person looks at me, then I may say something. But I usually call the person in before. With my mind, maybe, if I have to say something. I do not just bugger on people. We are very, we all like, we, us, we are this way. This is just part of how we are. Because that is a natural way of doing things. I had called him in once, like a year before, two years. Let me think about which year that was. Yeah. When he was walking in front, front on the other side of the sidewalk, he was just coming along from afar. I looked at him, that's all. He could have just walked away, but he actually, I looked at him, I called him in, in my mind. But I didn't say anything. I was just standing and looking. If he would not have been sensitive to it, he would have just walked by. He was on the phone even. Maybe he could have waved, yeah, hi, how are you doing? And continue walking. But he didn't. Not only that, not only did he acknowledge me, he also ended his phone call and crossed the street. Do you understand? I had not said a word. I just looked at him. It was pretty far away. It was diagonal across the street. Diagonal. He was on the phone, on his cell phone. I looked at him and then he stopped, he, he, he continued walking. Yeah, approaching more and more the house on the other side of the sidewalk. And then I heard him say, can I call you back? My neighbor is calling me. And he ended his phone call and then he crossed the street and came straight to, to me. So he got, he understood the field. He understood it. Yeah, that would be a year, be, a year or more. I think it was like in the beginning, spring of the previous year. Or was it two years or three years before? Okay, I will not put my hand in the fire for this part, but it was somewhere when I came back from Santa Cruz, when I had met Jeannie, that person from Gaia, the girl. Yeah, and when I was wearing free people clothes like grandma and these boots, maybe I have to look at my purchasing history when I got them to remember exactly which year that was. And I can make the math, but I don't think this is relevant. What is relevant is that when he was, when he came, okay, so I opened the door for him. I I stepped aside to let him in. Of course, then I clocked the door, I locked the door. So he must have been there for a moment, standing there. Because I do remember having shown him the table because he just didn't know where to go. When you go to a... You, he, he doesn't okay so see how he waited too so he walks in I let him in I walk aside I step aside from the door so he can walk in what is he gonna do next is he gonna go to the toilet wash his hands go to the restroom is he thirsty running to the kitchen where the fridge is and grab water from the fridge I don't have that but most fridge have those things an ice cube or is he gonna go make himself comfortable in the living room or is he going to go through because he remembers now that there was this salon, which I call the parlor. And there is another couch look overlooking the garden and the doors. Is he going to do that? Or is he going to go walk now? 
to the yard. That's what would be. If I would be comfortable with the person, that would be my first move. If I feel comfortable and it's a friend, my first move would be I walk to the garden. Because I'm curious. I always need to look outdoors. And the door were wide open, both of them, and I also had sprinkled. I mean, I had yeah, power pressure, I don't know that day. That is always clean, my terrace, very clean. Yeah, my flagstones. <laughs> but I had, everything was clean and neat. I had water, sprinkled water, I sprayed a little bit of, of of water over the terrace, so with the heat it would evaporate and would create this moist environment. I have done it only that one day for Paul. Maybe it reminded him a little bit of the tropical, maybe Thailand. I didn't have, that's a thought which comes to my mind at this very moment. I never thought about it otherwise. My chair made me do it and it felt nice. Yeah, maybe it would make him feel more, you know, home since he felt home in Thailand. Then with lesbian Jake, right? Yeah, his wife. So he could have walked outdoors, have a look, peek, or just stood in the door. Oh, wow, your garden, that's different, Zilka. Yeah, because the first time he came, it was light of the day as well. But he didn't do anything, he just stood there. He waited. And I locked the door. I do not know what he looked at. I have a strong feeling he looked at the stuff, at the place. I, think, I have a strong feeling he looked at the garden, or the living room, real quick, garden, living room. Not at me. I don't know, I would have felt it. But this is something which is, I, I, I'm assuming maybe, because maybe what I would do, I feel like he actually absorbed the space real quick. Because that's a natural method we do as people to see where we are at. Assessing the space real quick. So I was locking the, I was just about to lock the door and I also said, don't do it. I think he must have told me, but I don't think he watched me. I think it was just in his head. Because moment after moment, like I said, the reality is this. I check in what is needed. Moment after moment, I'm absolutely attentive. You're like a wild cat in the jungle. I'm absolutely attentive what is needed, what is needed. Because it was about pleasing him. Everything was in response to him. It hadn't been my idea, it had been someone else's idea. It wasn't even mine. So I did not lock the door, then I must have passed. But I'm so gentle and delicate, I would not pass too close, ever. And walk toward, you know, the dining room area. And then indicated to him, here's the table. And then he, he chose his chair. All the way around the table. No, not like it was his. But maybe, yes. No, I did not offer. I did not offer him water. He said he had five minutes. I did not offer him. If he would not have limited the time, and if I would be able to speak, I would have made him a coffee first, a cappuccino, of course, because it's yummy and I like it a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I had the machine, but no, nothing. I did not. I did not have water prepared for him for drinking. None. I know there was something else on the table. And like some decoration, I don't know what it was though. I can't remember what it was, but I know there was something else. I do not have table liners. Maybe a candle, I don't know. Maybe a candle, uh, something delicate like I am. So I think I'm done. Well, then he said, I'm sorry, I have to go. <coughs> Oh, I have to go. So I stepped aside near, nearer to the salon so he could pass by me without disturbance, right? Free to go. And I stood there, I did not move. He, he walked past me, walked to the door, said, I'm sorry, I don't have more time. And when did he said, let me think about it? Maybe on the table, he said, let me think about it. Yeah, and at the door, that at the door he said, no, he was standing with the back to me. He was just about to open the door when he said, I'm sorry, I don't have more time. No, he didn't look at me, but it didn't matter because we were connected. 
And then he turned around as he finished the sentence, as he opened the door to real quick, briefly. I do not know if he nodded or not, and then he exited. And that was it, that was all. I guess you wonder where I've been. I searched to find the love within. I can't let go My friends wonder what is wrong with me Well, I'm in a daze From your love, you see 